It was in 1990 when we got sick after our surf session, and we didn't know why. We were surfing in the middle of garbage. We were disgusted. We just wanted to make some noise and get media attention. At the beginning, we were five or six, but we started to stir up people with our actions. Then, the first local chapters were created to fight against dredging projects, nuclear tests, and pollution. We're about to set up a real counterpower, a keepers of the coastal network. But the real revolution was the Black Flag Project. When we published the first map of dirty beaches in 1997, what a heavy blow. For the first time, the government started to listen to us. Then we opened our first water analysis laboratory. If we can really call it a laboratory, but at least we started to have scientific data. Ten years after our first actions, in the 2000s, the ocean initiatives evolved with educational tools and marine litter data. I realize we are setting the path for the new generation. That's a big step for us. And above all, these doors that before we had to force, now the institutions themselves are opening them to us. 2000, 20 and 10, 20 and 20, decades go on and we too, we become a reference in the field of ocean protection. When the European Union decided to ban some single-use plastics, I think about Surfrider employees who worked hard for this, about the volunteers and all these successful actions on the ground and lobby campaigns. 30 years later, Surfrider certainly changed. Who could have imagined building this wide community around the ocean throughout Europe, on the coast and inland? This is the proof that Surfrider Europe is not only about surfing, it is a story of people who share, transmit, be amazed, fight, protect. The story of people exuding the ocean.